I'm a, I'm a lawyer by profession, so um, I'll be, be focusing more on the legal issues and the legal implications of climate change on, on statehood, uh, and also the implication on, on maritime zones. As we understand, uh, maritime zones are entitlements that states uh, have under the United Nations Convention on the, the Law of the Sea. And I'll briefly also uh, explain some of the, the initiatives that Tuvalu has uh, undertaken in regards to really strengthening our position both on the national level and regionally and, and internationally. International law can be defined as the, the body of rules established by treaty or through customs that governs the, the relations of states uh, existing within a very loose framework of, of laws. And, and as we know, there, there, there are limitations on the enforcement of, of some of these rules and international treaties, as we've seen many times, countries withdrawing from treaties, uh, refusing to, to follow certain agreements. But the important aspect of international law that I, I feel is, is an area that we can make a very positive contribution is, is the customary international law. And, and customary international law is formed, it is shaped by state practice, how states behave determined by, by looking at their laws, by looking at their policies. And it becomes customary inter international law when that particular practice becomes widespread across uh, many nations. I feel that this is, is an area that Tuvalu can, can make a contribution to other countries that are also have common interest in ensuring that our, our laws and our policies are really in line with, with what we're proposing on, on the international plane. by developing state practice, that as nations, we look at our laws, we look at our policies, we look at agreements that we're entering into, and really putting forward the, the proposition that we, we, we're arguing here about permanent statehood, that these things really need to be reflected on the national level. And it's something that we've been uh, encouraging for the, the Pacific Island countries, that we don't need to wait until other nations begin to recognize and support this notion. We can make a start by passing laws, passing policies that really reflects the, the positions that, uh, that, that I've highlighted here. Tuvalu insists that all countries forming relations with Tuvalu recognize the statehood of the nation as permanent and its existing maritime boundaries as set, even if Tuvalu loses its land territory due to sea level rise. And so this is a very important uh, policy, uh, not only for Tuvalu, but when you get other countries to, to recognize that, then it, it, it contributes to the, to, the, to the widespread adoption of these principles and these concepts uh, that we were talking about here. So um, we've, we've actually also developed uh, joint communiques, standardized our joint communiques to ensure that these principles are reflected in it. Um, and so, we, we, that's something that we're also pursuing within, in our foreign, foreign office. The constitution is, is actually under review. And one important aspect we we're looking at is the definition of our territory. So under the existing provisions of the, the constitution, the, the provision provides very broad coordinates and says that anything within any land territory within those coordinates is the, the, the territory of, of Tuvalu. For most of you, you'd be aware that under the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, countries are entitled to maritime zones that are measured from baselines. And we're entitled to a territorial sea that is measured up to 12 nautical miles, uh, an exclusive economic zone that is measured up to 200 nautical miles. Now, these maritime zones are measured from a baseline, and, and a baseline is defined under own clause as the, the, the low water mark. So when the tide is, is low, the, the measure of the baseline is taken from the low water mark. The challenge, the, I guess the legal cha challenge, is, as, as most of you would know from this definition, is that with, with sea level rise, the, the low water line would then shift over, over time because of, of climate change and causing the, the, the sea levels to, to rise. The, the proposed text is that the, the baseline coordinates declared under the Maritime Zones Act shall remain unchanged, notwithstanding any regression of the low water mark until and unless otherwise prescribed by an act of parliament. We have to ensure that our, our national laws as a first step is reflective of the proposition that we're pushing on the, on the international stage. And it removes this sense of waiting for other states to, to come on board. And it really puts the onus on us as, as, uh, as countries, as nations in the Pacific to, to be more proactive. Uh, and I believe the more countries, the more states that, that adopt this approach uh, we are contributing. We are contributing to the formation of customary international law uh, that would really support and cater for the situation that we are, we are in.